Not many people out there have ever actually seen the real first Thanksgiving proclamation. What the holiday means, why it was created. And then we're going to talk about Rush's story. about Governor William Bradford. Now, a lot of people out there may be wondering who in the heck is Governor William Bradford? Well, for those of you who don't know, Governor William Bradford was the man who was put in charge of a very dangerous voyage from England to what would later become the United States. Governor William Bradford was the captain of the Mayflower. And he's the one that wrote and compiled the, what would become the Mayflower Compact. It was a treacherous trip. Many of them died on the way there. A boat that might have been, I think, 60 feet, 70 feet in length. It was not a very large boat. The first winter in the New World claimed the lives, a very brutal winter, claimed the lives of many of the colonists that came over. And if you all recall, the reason that they fled England was because of the persecution that was happening there. Henry VIII, who was no longer king at that time, I think he had long passed, but Henry VIII had gotten a little frustrated with the Catholic Church because the Pope in Rome would not grant him a divorce. We've all heard the story of Henry VIII and his multiple wives, right? So Henry VIII, in retaliation, broke England from the Catholic Church and formed their own church, a church, a church that was, um, well, it was the king's church. And many people living in England at that point said, nope, had enough of this. We're not going to be persecuted. We want to leave so we can practice our faith as we see fit. They left and fled to America. This is how this story got started with Governor William Bradford in the Mayflower Compact. But I'm going to read this to you. This is actually the first Thanksgiving proclamation from Bradford. 29 November, 1623. Ladies and gentlemen, 401 years ago. Repeat, 401 years ago. The first Thanksgiving proclamation. Inasmuch... As the Great Father has given us this year an abundant harvest of Indian corn, wheat, peas, beans, squashes, and garden vegetables, and has made the forests to abound with game, and the sea with fish and clams, and inasmuch as he has protected us from the ravages of the savages, has spared us from pestilence and disease, has granted us freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our own conscience. Now, I, your magistrate, do proclaim that all ye pilgrims with your wives and ye little ones do gather at ye meeting house on ye hill between the hours of nine and twelve in the daytime on Thursday, November 29th of the year of our Lord, 1623, in the third year, the third year since ye pilgrims landed on Pilgrim Rock, there listen to your pastor and render thanksgiving to Almighty God for all his blessings. William Bradford, Governor. Now, right there, a lot of people might think that's the beginning and the end of it, but in fact, that was just a small snapshot. And there was quite a bit more to the story. And this is where Rush Limbaugh came in with a lot of his, well, unveiling of history that most places hadn't taught. See, a lot of folks thought the beginning and end of the Thanksgiving story was the pilgrims came over. They had harsh winters. Many died. And then the Indians showed them how to do stuff. And then they had a big feast together. And that was Thanksgiving. 
That's basically true. There's really nothing to argue there. But there is also, and this is where Rush came in, there was also a lot of very important context missing that a lot of people don't know. And that is the story that when the pilgrims first came over, one of the primary reasons why there was a failure of the new world and the colonies that they built was because of what we would later refer to as communism. And what solved the problem was what we would later refer to as capitalism. Yes. For those of you that don't know the story, that is actually the truth. So let me not digress any further. I'll just let Rush tell you the story because he puts it in ways that I couldn't. And I thought about actually reading it out, his transcript, but I said, nah, YouTube will probably copyright claim the stream for it and maybe even the video clip that we put out from this. But so be it. That's not what it's about for me. What it's about for me is the message and helping people understand. And I'm going to let Rush Limbaugh tell you in his own words. So William Bradford, after putting everybody in a common store, the Mayflower Compact, they wanted to be fair. They wanted everybody to have one common share of stock and everything that happened that the pilgrims produced and it bombed. It didn't work. There was no prosperity. There was no creativity because. And let me explain real quick what he was talking about, because I don't think I set that up correctly before I started playing this. The original Mayflower, Mayflower Compact dictated that all the pilgrims that arrived in the New World would have one share of common stock in the colony. Meaning that no matter how they worked or how much they produced, an individual, a family, whatever the case is, they all equally owned the product of the work of the entire colony. Which, of course, as we know by today's standards, is rather disincentivizing for maximum productivity. When you actually unleash the power of the individual, we now know that that individual will have the highest capacity for achievement and success because they are working not for their own selfishness, but for their own self-interest. And there is a difference. And this is something that the pilgrims had to learn when they first moved in. There was no incentive. Here's what Bradford wrote about the failure. Governor William Bradford. For this community, so far as it was, was found to breed much confusion and discontent. They were not happy, in other words. This community was found to breed much confusion and discontent and retard much employment that would have been to their benefit and comfort. In other words, nobody worked. The way they set it up killed and discouraged work. There was no need. Now, I want you to also understand that what Rush Limbaugh is reading from is the actual journals, the historical journals, the handwritten journals of Governor William Bradford himself. These are his words. For young men that were most able and fit for labor and service, sat around and did nothing, should spend their time and strength to work for other men's wives and children without being paid for it. They said, why do that? So they didn't. It was thought to be injustice. Why should you work for other people? Of course, he's paraphrasing right now. And again, I'm, I'm interrupting this because YouTube is sensitive about this information. So the first part he was reading, Bradford's words. Now he's obviously paraphrasing. He's going into, he's reading a lot of the text from his own book, the way things ought to be right now as well. When you can't work for yourself, what's the point? You hear what he was saying here, folks? The pilgrims found that people could not be expected to do their best work without some incentive. So what did they try? What did Bradford's pilgrim community try next? They unharnished the power of free enterprise. They invoked capitalism, the principle of private property, all the way back in the 1600s, 1400s. 16, I mean, it was incredible. 
every family was assigned its own plot of land and they could do with it whatever they wanted to do. Bradford wrote, this had very good success for it made all hands industrious. So as much more corn was planted than otherwise would have been. So when profit was introduced, when the opportunity to prosper was introduced, it went gangbusters. That, my friends, is the essence of the true story of Thanksgiving. This is where it gets really good. If you're laboring under the misconception that I was, that I was taught in school, they, they set up trading posts, they exchanged goods with the Indians after they had enjoyed this prosperity. It was not the Indians that brought them prosperity, and it's not said to insult anybody. The Indians assisted them on their arrival, undeniably. But what led to prosperity for these original settlers was a discovery that the common store failed. Socialism didn't work when they introduced what turns out to be capitalism. They didn't have the name for it, but when they turned loose individual incentive, keep what you produce, sell what you don't need, they went crazy. This is not something they were taught by anybody but self-experience. It was not the Indians. None of this is said to put anybody down. Don't misunderstand. The Indians did a lot of things that helped them, which I'll get to in just a second. But I'm going to stop right there. It's twice now because, again, <clears throat> before Donald Trump, unequivocally, Rush Limbaugh was the most lied about, most maligned, most misquoted, deliberately misquoted person that has ever been a part of American media. I've never read so many lies told about one man in my life as I did the 30 years of listening to him. And it, it, the kind of lies that I'm talking about would say that Rush Limbaugh says that the Indians had nothing to do with Thanksgiving or Native Americans as referred to now, right? Which is you could hear just now in this own clip. I think this was only a few months before he passed away. I think this was the 2020 show. This was the last story of Thanksgiving that he did before he died in February of 2021. But pay attention to the fact that he's not disparaging or discounting or dismissing the Native American population that assisted. He's simply illuminating a key part of the story that most of us as Americans and our children have never been taught and that, quite frankly, may be the most important piece of the story that there is. It was their own industriousness. They set up trading posts. They exchanged goods with the Indians. They sold stuff to them. And those profits allowed them to pay off the debts of their sponsors in London and in Holland. And, and they had to take on a ton of debt because the voyage of the Mayflower did not come cheap. And they had to borrow a lot of money, as Rush pointed out, from bankers in London and Holland to get there. And one of the biggest hurdles they had to overcome when Bradford and his pilgrims reached the New World was they, they, had, to, they had to actually generate something, profit, merchandise, goods and services to send back to pay off the debt, the enormous debt that, it, that they took on just to be able to escape to some semblance of freedom from the tyranny in England. And you know what? The success of that colony after they had abandoned socialism and tried what was essentially capitalism, the word spread throughout the old world of this massive amount of prosperity that was there for the taking in the new world. And guess what happened? The new world was flooded with new arrivals. The success and the prosperity of the Plymouth settlement attracted more Europeans and began what came to be known as the Great Puritan Migration. And all it took was prosperity. 
and the word spreading across the Atlantic Ocean of how there, mo there was prosperity and, and it was there for the taking. All you had to do was get there and give it a shot. The lesson is, the true story of Thanksgiving is that William Bradford and his pilgrim community were thanking God for the blessings on their community after the first miserable winter of a documented failure brought on by their attempt at fairness and equality, which was socialism. It didn't work. Only when they abandoned it did it work. And I need to say again, because I don't, I don't want people to be misunderstood, get noses out of joint. The Native Americans, the indigenous peoples, the Indians, whatever you want to call them, they were of considerable assistance and they were friendly when the pilgrims arrived, but they had little, if anything, to do with the prosperity that occurred because that was the result of Bradford and the pilgrim leadership deciding to change their structure according to the Mayflower Compact. Now, the Indians assisted, naturally, I can't deny it. I mean, they taught them how to fish and this kind of thing that they didn't know how to do, and that led them to be productive, undeniably so, but it was the pilgrim community itself which experienced this massive prosperity, the word of which spread all the way back to the old world Europe. There you have it. Now, Bradford's first proclamation of Thanksgiving, November 29th, year of our Lord, 1623, that I previously read. Now, you understand it. And that's if you maybe even heard it before. But I have another one for you. And one that, in my opinion, is equally as important, if not perhaps more so. Bradford's was paramount, no question. But there is one more. If there was any doubt as to the nature of Thanksgiving, and if you're watching this, as a clip on Thanksgiving Day, which I hope you are, and I hope many of you watching now will return to and watch tomorrow on Thanksgiving with your family, with your friends, to remember why we are here and why we give thanks. Big credit to Rush for making sure that the truth was always something that was of the highest importance to him, as it is here on this show. Hence, the little joke in my name. Eh, maybe not a joke. Harbinger of truth. I actually think Rush Limbaugh uttered those words many years ago. It's kind of always stuck with me. So I've borrowed that from him. I guess maybe I should have done this before. Bear with me. I'm going to make a bit of a costume change. Not much of one, but enough. Because after all the years, it's time for this hat to come out. Now, I've had this hat 25 years, at least. 25 years. Proud to still be wearing it, Rush. Camera's mirrored. The EIB Network. Let me read you one final piece, and that is the Thanksgiving Proclamation by George Washington. And I hope you share this with your families tomorrow or today as you're watching this on Thanksgiving Day as well. This was proclaimed by Washington on the 3rd of October, 1789. Now, if you're wondering, and if that date sounds Hmm, a little curious. You're not wrong. This was roughly two weeks. Two weeks after the United States Constitution was ratified in September uh, of 1789. Less than two weeks later, George Washington gave this proclamation. If you indulge me, and again, I hope you share this with your family. 
by the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly implore His protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and their happiness. Again, this was declared two weeks after the ratification of the United States Constitution. Now, therefore, I, George Washington, do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th of November, next to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the late war for the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty, which we have since enjoyed for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the national one now lately instituted for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge and in general for all the great and various favors for which he, God, hath been pleased to confer upon us. And also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions to enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually, to render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness unto us. Think France. And to bless them with good government, peace, and concord, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue, and the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant unto mankind such a degree of, of the temporal prosperity as he alone knows best. Given under my hand at the city of New York, the third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1789, George Washington. We can pretend that Thanksgiving is what our schools teach us <clears throat> and what even commercial nonsensical tripe is promulgated upon the American public each and every day and each and every year as the season approaches. Or we can be cognizant of the fact that Thanksgiving has been documented for over 400 years of history in this land is being a day that Americans, even before they were Americans, are meant to give thanks to God for the graces 
and the gifts of liberty. And I wish you all the best and most wonderful Thanksgiving Day tomorrow. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.